Hi everyone, I'm Mary Beth McGandrews from Dread Central and today I'm here with Ruth Paxton who directed a banquet from IFC Midnight. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you for having me. Thank you for chatting with me. Uh, the banquet is incredible, so I'm very excited to pick your brain about it. But um, before we jump into that, can you just tell anyone watching who hasn't seen the banquet or seen a banquet yet what the film is about? Yeah, I mean, at its heart, it's about a family dealing with grief. Um, it's, it's, you know, a once really tight knit unit of mum, daughter, um, two daughters. Uh, I'm going to start. Can I start that again? Yes, you can. Good. I can, I'll edit it out. <laughs> I know, you've thrown me. You're the first person that's asked me to do this. So I'm like, you know, what is this film about? Right. Okay. Yes. I mean, the film at its heart is about, is a sort of essentially a family drama, but it's about a teenage girl in the wake of the loss of her father who has a kind of spiritual experience and believes that um, her body is meant to serve a higher purpose. And how that manifests is that she stops eating, and that's problematic for her mother who wants her to eat. And it's really kind of about how, yeah, how Betsy, the, the teenage girl, deals with her grief and how that impacts on the rest of the family and what may or may not be happening as well. Cool. And so it's a really, it's a layered story. There's a lot of going on with like intergenerational trauma and trauma and girl, and it's really interesting, but I'm curious how kind of the, the core of the idea came up. I know there's another writer and I wonder like how you got involved with the project and how you kind of got involved in this really interesting story. Sure. Well, it was, the script did, it was in existence because when I came on board, it was actually, it was developed to a degree. Um, and I read the script because I had a meeting with producer Leo Darby and we were really just talking very generally about our own slates because I'm normally um, the author of my own work. So, you know, I think she was keen to know what I was writing, basically. And then she talked to me about a banquet. She, you know, she pitched it as a film that was kind of somewhere between Rosemary's Baby, Hereditary and Take Shelter. And these, not only these films, but the combination of these films, that was really intriguing to me. Um, and so, you know, I read it. I wanted to do it. I, you know, there's so many things about the script that, that made me want to direct it, not least the, the central P scene, the big, you know, heavy dinner scene that comes about a third of the way through the film. That was, that was definitely a deciding factor in it for me, but also just these relationships. And I guess at the time, the, the earlier version of the script had, had, a, had an anchor more firmly rooted in the idea of religion and the kind of religion that Betsy was latching on to um, was, was specified. And for me, that was less interesting, uh, just as a, I'm not a religious person. And so, you know, while from the outside, I can understand it, I couldn't connect with it. What I could connect with was the idea of believing in something that other people don't believe in. And that was very much, you know, that very much comes from my experience of having, you know, poor mental health at times, but also, you know, um, of, of going through a period of disordered eating as well and, and understanding mm -hmm. that specific okay. madness that comes with starvation. So there was, there was loads, I mean, I wouldn't say that the experience that the characters are familiar in any really acute way, but their experiences are familiar. And I, you know, I've got a mum and I've got a relationship with my mum, <laughs> you know, so there was that part of it too. There's, yeah, that, that part of it was very interesting to me. It's like we all have relationships with so, ooh, we all have relationships with our mom that maybe aren't horrifying, but I feel like every like especially women, like people who identify as women who have had relationships with, with mothers can kind of tap into a very specific experience of loving your mom and also having, you know, yep. not always a great time with your mom. You love her, Absolutely. but you don't like her. <laughs> yeah, no, it's and I mean, you know, it's it's it, like there's aspects of their relationship that are familiar to me, particularly because, you know, my mum had to watch me not eat for a while. And I, you know, yeah. I saw what that did to the family and what that did to her. But beyond that, I think, you know, in general, and again, I'm being careful what I say, but like women's relationships with their bodies is, you know, key to that is, is the relationship their mother has to their bodies and to food. And so that's something that's interesting to me. Um, yeah. and the power of that. And the fact that, like, you know, a mother's first job um, is to make sure their child is fed, whether that's a biological child or, you know, or other, you know, you've got to keep your kid alive. So that that sort of primary function 
and Holly not being able to kind of, you know, do that job actually has, uh, you know, it, it says, uh, it does something interesting to her as a mother beyond being concerned about her kids, it then starts to question how good a mother she is. And so all, all of those foundations being shook was something that seemed actually quite simple, like quite normal, quite simple. We all live in family situations like yeah. that, you know? But I thought that this is a, you could definitely see a way to making it horrific, you know? Yeah. Well, and I also love this movie because it's got like a mini matriarchy going on in it. Like there are male characters, obviously, but it is a, it's about four women and it's about three generations of women. And I really, I love movies that are like that, that are basically like a, a generations of women all coming together and dealing with trauma because of course I love that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to hear more about kind of building out that matriarchy and those family relationships and on screen and kind of making them not just a family but hinting at all these other things going on under the surface. Like it's much more complicated but you don't necessarily straight out say how complicated all these relationships are. Well, I, I like to think that, that that's maybe one of the influences I had on the development of the script was the focus on the family, really. Yeah. And, and the fact that like, I kind of knew that that was the heart of the story, what well, was for me anyway. Yeah. And the disintegration of that unit was the tragedy. And so, you know, I, I did a lot of work to really um, deepen and enrich the characterization of these four women so that like that really is the the nucleus rather than I mean obviously there's there's as you say there's layers to the story there's lots of different themes going on but it's yeah it's about how we interact and I guess you know you see a lot of why Holly behaves the way she does when June comes into the story and um, you know a lot of how Holly is mothering and the decisions she's making that allow this situation to um continue are because of experiences she's had and yeah that intergenerational trauma is quite I'm, I'm interested in that and cycl cyclical relationships mm -hmm. and you know how we mother and how we think we want to mother differently as a result of how we've been mothered all that stuff I think is really fertile well it's a good word for it but you know like kind of you know grounds for drama and so the women you work with are incredible like the performances in this film are incredible but Jessica Alexander's performance as Betsy is is it stellar, a standout, because she's going through these like incredibly intense, like emotional transformations because her it's not necessarily a bodily transformation. It's like a mental, emotional. And so what was it like kind of working with her and guiding her through these scenes? Because she has got some, a lot of very like, in, like emotionally intense and kind of just a lot wild scenes. Yeah, no, I mean, she, she is a very powerful, powerful performer and a very powerful presence. And that's, you know, that's why I cast her because she she just kind of grabbed me so um, so powerfully through the computer, which is a, a very clunky way of saying it. But <laughs> ultimately, you know, like Jess, Jess just kind of lives the performance. So I don't, she's not practicing a method form of acting. That's that's not her process. But she doesn't really have, a, a, you know, a deep and meaningful process for for going at it. She just kind of latches quite quickly onto what Betsy is and then just becomes her and just does it. And I think, you know, we talked, we, we I, you know, I kind of suggested to her ways she might like to think about the character. You know, we talked about the period of time from when she has her epiphany to when she, you know, really tests her mother at the end of the film as being a gestational period. I think it's interesting you say that there isn't a physical transformation because that was a decision I made that was contrary to the earlier script. I, I wanted there to be no physical evidence of either her starvation or, che or, or change because I felt, well, we'd seen it before, but also I was kind of sensitive to how you portray that on screen when it, when it, when it is exploring, you know, really serious issues of eating disorders. So what we talked about was the idea of, of like when a, when a seed is planted and that idea grows and takes root and becomes more and more and more real. So it was kind of like a sort of, yeah, a pregnancy of sorts that culminates in quite a sort of laboring process at the end. That was a, a strong inspiration for her behavior when she's on the bed at the end. Wait, that's so cool. Yeah. Oh, that's so, I got that little bit <laughs> of that birth thing at the end, but I was like, am I just trying to read too hard into movies? <laughs> no, no, it's all, all, the, all those symbols are there. It's, um, 
it's it was you know I wanted her to be in extremis at the end and even you know I mean I know Jess has not you know gone through labor and neither have I but you know we all know that imagery and we, we can you know she can put herself in the space of of of, of you know what that might be like and that yeah. was yeah that was kind of our um yeah we, that was what she the image she had going into playing that scene even though we did lots of um really unpredictable unplanned stuff because really I directed that scene as it was happening we just oh. talked to each other yeah. oh cool oh that's awesome so I kind of gave direction as it was happening yeah oh, cool. so okay and if this is too personal of a question please let me know but I'm just curious because you've mentioned experience with disordered eating and so what was it like to kind of deal with that behind the camera uh, like as in filming it and I because I know that sometimes when people have like experiences with things like that sometimes it's cathartic to create art around it or not and I'm just curious like what that experience was like for you to kind of confront that those issues like your past kind of experiences with this movie it was I wouldn't I mean I wouldn't say it was cathartic but not because but only because that that's something that I would say you know I mean you're always in recovery with stuff like that yes. you know I mean it's, yeah. it's something you're always working on but I don't feel it as a huge presence in my life now but what what I what I took from it was understanding that fear of something bad happening if you eat that was that was how I got into Betsy's character because I'm not religious so it wasn't possible for me to connect with the idea of like a god and and purpose in that sense but I am somebody with a mood disorder and I'm somebody that you know at times has disordered thoughts and particularly around food at times and so I could really connect with Betsy's fear of what would happen if she ate it's not it, it, it wasn't about body image it's it and yeah. it's not in reality about that it's about it's I suppose it's the same thing as people that have you know like you know extreme OCD it's it's what will happen if I don't if I do this or I don't do this and with her it's about eating food so you know from that perspective it helped me it helped me direct her it helped me understand the frustration that the mother was experiencing because I, ha I had seen that happen to my own mum but I think that you know the I was I was also I was kind of like hypersensitive to the portrayals of, of eating disorder on screen I think you've got to be really responsible when it comes to that and I'm not you know I'm not an authority on it so I did as much research as I could and I knew that like basically the safe thing to do is avo to is avoid behavior really to, to, to demonstrating behavior so you don't see Betsy you don't see anything she does in order to enable this. She, she just, you just don't ever see her eating, you know, and Holly doesn't ever see her eating. So there's, there's that. But I'm not sure actually I've explained that very well, but what I would say is that I was, you know, really conscious that it needed to be very carefully handled. And I, you know, at no time did I want you to, to see her her body lose weight um, or, you know, her physically decline. If anything, she actually becomes more beautific and more youthful as the film goes on. Yeah, and I, I really appreciated that because eating disorders and those kinds of thoughts are not portrayed always the most sensitively in horror. So it was, it was nice to see like a more kind of like, oh, this isn't body, like it's not body horror. I feel like eating disorders are so often body horror and it's like, well, and as someone who has OCD and has weird thoughts, like if I don't do something, I also really appreciated that because I was like, oh, okay, like you're getting kind of getting to the like the weird brain worms behind when things yeah. happen like that. And you can't explain it, but it's just kind of the way your brain chemistry works. Exactly. Um, yeah. And then I think I only have time for one more question, but I wanted to ask about how you filmed the food because you made the, the food look so good and so gross. And <laughs> I was both hungry and disgusted. And it was like, have you ever watched the Hannibal TV show? I have watched bits of it and imagery from that was ref was part of our reference. Was it? Okay, I was going to say like I got that like beautiful and creepy and gross vibe and it was just really fascinating to see how you framed the food and I just wanted to hear a little bit more about how you worked with that and like kind of the vision around how you presented images of food in the film. Well, reading the script and, and knowing how I was going to present my, my my kind of pitch materials I knew that food would would be in massive massive close-up I just knew that like we would be going right into the food and in part that's because for for Betsy food's the enemy but also it's it's a power tool for Holly you know I mean not only is she preparing like food that her daughter's not eating she's going to great lengths to prepare really aesthetically delicious you know gorgeous food 
Um, and that's that became, you know, a huge part of her character. Um, I actually need to give credit to the production designer, Sophia Stockholm, because it's really, you know, what she was able to do with a very limited budget to make, because, you know, this, this is a family with money. I mean, they have money worries, but they are an affluent family. And so, you know, the, the, the way they are eating is, is not typical, let's say. It's definitely, there's a lot of effort put in, but it's also probably quite expensive produce, you know? And Sophia did an amazing job of, of designing a menu across the film that tells us so much about the characters. You the menu too, like like all the food menus too. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I there was uh, there was placeholders. Like, I'm trying to think. Like, you know, I knew, for example, that I wanted Isabel to be. I, I, I that was always going to be like tearing a, a chicken thigh, like with the blood dripping off. I wanted that flesh for sure. But there was other moments, um, like where when we're in the ice rink. And I had had, in that moment, I had similarly written in that, I think it was something cold, like she was, Holly was eating something with coleslaw that would drip. And Sophia kind of said, look, you know, yes, but that's gonna be a real headache for resets. And, you know, considering we're on location that day. And I, I had thought, you know, what about if, if Holly eats sushi? She seems like the kind of woman that might eat sushi. And I, I would never have thought of that. And I loved that idea. I loved how it emphasized the coldness in the space, but also how, you know, this is a woman that puts a lot of value on the food she eats and the food she's seen eating. And it's just kind of, yeah, it, it was kind of a genius, a stroke of genius, I think. And, you know, talking about the way the film, the food was filmed, sorry, David and I, my cinematographer, we like to go into things. We like to go close to things. I like to feel the textures of things. And I just, yeah, I knew that this film was going to really be based around moments of really kind of like, I mean, we talked about ASMR in relation to the sounds for the food as well. And yeah, that was, it was like, <laughs> as you bacon, basically, exactly what the, you said. Specifically the bacon scene where the bacon's almost burning, yeah. and popping. I was like, this is, this is like an ASMR video. Like you see like the yeah. green, the little grease flecks popping off of yes. the skin. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I mean, it's just, it's just looking at the domestic a different way. That was, that yeah. was the thing, you know, I mean, the most, the most horrific, sort of, or I suppose grotesque moments and visuals in the film are stuff that's around us all the time. It's, it's not supernatural stuff. Obviously there's moments where we slip into that kind of world, but really, you know, what, like, for, for example, one of the most, one of the moments in the film that gets the strongest reaction is when Isabel's sick and she vomits on a pane of glass on a window and, you know, her hand lands in it. And I watched that with a few few audiences now, and it gets the strongest reaction. And that's just a person being sick. That's not that's not body horror in a you know in a supernatural capacity. It's just it's just somebody being sick, and we all know what that smells like, and we all know what that feels like, and we all know how minging it would be to put your hand in it. So that's for me like really what inspires really you know all those moments of horror in the film. I wanted to be rooted in what it is to be human and what's disgusting about being human. Yeah, that is this movie. Actually, I had one more <laughs> question for you, actually, yeah. just out of, but before we wrap up, um, if you had to double feature a banquet with another movie, did, it, did my friend Emily, my friend Emily might have asked you this question, but um, what would you double feature it with? I don't know, right? <laughs> Basically, I've gone blank, but I'm thinking, well, okay, maybe, you see, I would maybe say The Shining, Right. This is this is a film I've talked a lot about today. The Shining was a big reference for me in this okay. film in making the film. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, for for a number of reasons, but mainly because it 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 harnesses that idea of of impending doom, of dread, of just complete discomfort that intensifies. And that was for me, the, you know, the tonal journey I wanted the film to take. So so possibly okay. that. Um, cool. But if you're a friend. I'm trying to think of your friend Emily. Um, when I would, it, would I have spoken to her last year though? At TIFF, at TIFF, yeah, she has yes. short, short I, I, blonde hair. Yes. yes, 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 yes. So, and I think she thought raw. Oh, interesting. That was one of the, I was. I, yeah, that, I was that, 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 huh? I saw someone compare it to Melancholia. Oh, as, well, um, I like that too. Which That's, I, see. I'll happily take that. Are you a Von Trier fan? 
big fan, big, big, big fan. And Melancholia and Antichrist were really big, um, yeah, really big influences on the cinematography for this. Oh, cool. That's awesome. I definitely saw Melancholia. I haven't seen Antichrist in a long time, so I could... <laughs> But um, thank you so much, Ruth, for chatting with me thank today you. about a banquet. Um, and everyone, please watch it when it's available. Thank you very much.